Pick the most valuable. I'm sorry, how'd you acquire it? Goodwill. Goodwill. So you shop at Goodwill. I like to find things I like there. Yeah. Things you like. So you decorate the house with it. So you like the blue, white. Well, you're wearing a nice, pretty blue, white, Asian inspired scarf, too. So how old do you think this is? I actually don't think it's old. Okay, you think it's new? Probably. What's new? Like, you're younger than me, so what's new to you? You know, new to me is, I don't know, Bon Jovi. <laughs> right. Richie Zambora, new to me. Now, what's new to you? What date? I just think, like, 90s. From 1990s? You think it's from the 1990s? Well, I don't know. I well, think, that's a guess. Yeah, I like that I just kind of assumed that it's not valuable. Why? Because you liked it? What's the deal that you think it's not valuable? I like this, but I usually like crap, so it can't be valuable. Come on, Michelle. I, I honestly can't tell the difference between the valuable blue and white and the cheap blue and white. It's not easy. No. It's not. High school, three years of college, two more years of a master's, and, and five more years to get the PhD, 10 years in major museums, five more years in university teaching, 20,000 objects a year at appraisal events all across the United States, trips to Asia, and everybody's still learning, even me. It's not easy. This is a beautiful piece, and it's a good piece. And now you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> right? And I want you to know why. When you touch it, when I allow you to get your objects off my table, when you touch it, did you notice my hair is growing? It's growing. I had that terrible, like, terrible cut. Put your hand in it, push into it. You'll feel the texture of it. And what you're feeling is actually the cobalt glaze that has been hand done. When you look inside, I want you to look for little actual striations, little like lines inside that will tell you that it actually is hand built. Two things you look for, texture, whether it's hand built inside. And if you can get your finger down in there deep enough, you can feel ridges. And then you know you have an early piece and you know you have a piece that's of high quality. Your piece dates between 1900 and 1920, known as the Orientalist period in, West, in the West, that's Europe and America, and value on that piece is $175. What did you pay at Goodwill? You are giving the farm away. <laughs> $2.99 is great. Give her a hand. Wonderful. <laughs> Texture, get in there and feel the ridges. All right. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. How are you? What do you know about the black wear piece from the Santa Clara Pueblo that I'm holding in my hand, which has been hand carved? It is a candlestick holder. How'd you acquire this? These, these These, I'm looking at one. There's a pair. There's a pair. I just brought one. You just brought one. Okay. And when they were out there visiting... So you acquired them from in-laws? Yes. Okay. And you have a pair? Yes. Are they both cracked? This yes. one's cracked. Oh, they're both cracked. Yes. They're black on black wear. They're made famous by a San Ildefonso Pueblo potter named Maria Martinez. Naranjo is the signature on the bottom of this one, who's also a relatively well-known Pueblo potter. Native American potters who are working on the Pueblos. In this particular case, it's the Santa Clara Pueblo. This particular piece, one and then the other one's exactly identical to it, has the same kind of carvings. These are inset carving on, of course, blackware pottery, ceramic, fired. The pair cracked, $200. The pair not cracked, $800. I think they, they got cracked because they went to Florida in the winter and they... Oh, don't go to Florida in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> They turn all the heat off. My father used to winterize the cabin. We're going to winterize everything. It's freezing cold, right? So they, for, they re didn't realize that temperature and humidity would change it significantly. That's a problem. Well, I'm sorry for you because that's a big, big change in value. Hi. How are you doing? How did you acquire these pieces of paper porcelain? So thin you can see through them like paper. <laughs> Right? Beautiful. Do you have a full set? Did you just bring me one teacup? Had a full set. The cat knocked them off the table. The cat! 
dun 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 dun. The cat. Yeah. All five? Broke them all? <coughs> what else did they break? Did the cat break? Let me ask you a question. Does the cat still have a place to sleep in your house? <laughs> no longer have the cat. Oh, <laughs> the cat went out with this. All right. Well, let's appraise the pot, okay? I know, it's a sad day with the cat, right? This particular piece is a nice piece. Um, it, too, is hand-built. This particular piece is porcelain. So it has no bone ash in it, like bone china, right? No bone ash. Porcelain, no bone ash. Bone china has bone ash along with kaolin and feldspar and such. This particular piece has no bone ash. It's about durability and such. 22 karat gold banding here. It has the two elements here on the finial. This finial is two flowers pinched together. You'll notice here the lid. The lid is chipped, which decreases value. But this is a nice piece all the same. And it, 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 it's Chinese. It dates to about 1900 and value on it about $65 in this condition. If it had the whole set, we'd be talking 400, 500 bucks. The cat, <laughs> the cat got you. Too bad, too bad. How did you acquire this piece? I bought that in an antique store. How nice, that was nice. Was it an occasion, Christmas, anniversary, something like that? Their anniversary, fifth, uh, 25th. Oh, that's nice. So 25 is silver, but you got them an Asian ceramic. <laughs> I was 17. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's hand painted, it's hand gilded, it's hand built. You see the ridges? Right inside, you can see the ridges and you can feel the ridges inside. Um, it's a nice idea for you to have an understanding, right? Yeah. This particular piece also is um, hand painted here in Satsuma. That means you have a very, very small type of um, brush and you put the gilt right on top. It's very nicely done. It's marked on the bottom as well. It's footed, which is important, and value on that piece. What's that piece used for? Not handles, something to pour out. Handles, you're going to pour it out this way? Yeah. What are you going to pour out? Uncle Louie's ashes. Yeah. <laughs> Typically used as an urn. Yeah. Value on that particular piece, about $150. Mm -hmm. Did you make a good deal from the 1970s when you bought it? I paid 100 You paid 100 for it. So you paid as much. Today online, with all of the, the changing with respect to, of course, the internet and trading, you're going to see a lot of different types of... Um, elements like that and you're going to see the, the values ranged up and down. How'd you acquire this piece? Philip? Nice. It's a nice piece. It's a Nuka glaze. It's hand built. I think it's a ceramic piece by a student work. A little better than student work. The finial is molded and then it's applied here. They didn't finish the top. The top should all be the same color. Value on that particular vessel anywhere between 40 and 50 dollars. How about the Asian piece? Which Asian piece is worth more? Is it the bowl or is it the plate? I'm hoping the bowl because I gave Eric the plate. You gave Eric the plate, so you're hoping it's the bowl, right? Yes. Okay. Because I know Eric and he's not giving it back, right? You think it's the plate? Yeah? Is this yours, Eric? This is marked on the back. It indicates the piece is Chinese and it dates to the early years of the 20th century. Mass produced in large numbers, about 10 bucks. This is the bowl. <laughs> the bowl, in fact, is unmarked. It is Japanese. This particular piece dates between 1880 and 1905. Value on this is 125 bucks. Ho ho! Everyone's looking for the mark when in this case the mark is the more valuable piece. Don't only think because it's marked, it's more valuable. Don't only think because it's old, it's more valuable. You have to look at the quality, the condition, and the decoration on the piece. If you look at these two pieces, you can actually see that this particular plate here, this is all mass done. This isn't done by hand. This is done basically by machine. This piece is all hand painted. The hand is going to be a little bit, um, a little bit less accurate right, than if you did it by machine. So sometimes you want to look for those pieces that look like they're more inaccurate than accurate. How do we acquire this piece? Karen, yes. how'd you acquire the Yadro? It came from my mother's collection. It's a late 70s Yadro. 
It has multiple figures, which increases its value. Your mother was not a smoker, was she? No. Okay. There is a um, residue on this Yadro. Residue here from a sticker. So be careful of the stickers. Everybody likes to put a sticker. You know, you get those free stickers from like the March of Dimes or St. Jude's or something. It says your name and address and they put them on the bottom of things. Don't do that. Because what happens is the sticker residue or the glue will stick to your piece. So be careful of that. This particular piece is a Yadro from the 70s. It's in very nice condition. Yadros are those Spanish ceramic pieces made of porcelain, hand painted, always in these muted colors. These muted colors are oftentimes really slender taffy pull style figures and they have the beiges and the blues and they have some green and usually a gray or such. Value on that piece is $400. Kathleen, how did you acquire this image, this particular Toby mug of Douglas MacArthur? It's just been in my family, my parents or grandparents. Anybody serve in the war in your family? Everybody. Everybody, right? Yeah, everybody. And if any of you, of course, are part of military families, or if you are, in fact, serving, thank you for your service. Or if you have served. My father served under Douglas MacArthur. You know, the Pacific Theater. We're coming back. This whole thing. Yeah. So my dad was in the Philippines. Where was yours? Korea. Korea. Okay. So MacArthur, of course, great figure, political as well as, of course, military uh, figure. These start, um, these particular Toby mugs, with, of course, a sword here, as opposed to the Thompson machine gun my father, of course, had when he was a combat medic. But this particular piece says, General Douglas MacArthur, it says Royal Winton Ware. So Royal Winton, relatively well-known ceramic company, making, of course, these small mugs. They're based on Royal Dalton mugs of characters from novels like um, Charles Dickens, for example, and the characters of his play, uh, of his um, novels, uh, like David Copperfield or um, Ebenezer Scrooge or the like. So political figures, military figures becomes popular after 1945. So this is the 50s into the 60s. Value on this piece, about $75. It's a very rare one. Much more rare than its equivalent of uh, President Eisenhower, who of course was also a general in the European theater. This is the Pacific theater. So nice. The realtors will tell you just sell the house, everything else is junk. You have been insuring all that junk in your house with a $100,000 typically homeowner's insurance policy for objects in the house, right? You're paying the premium. Why all of a sudden when you're cold is it junk? It's not. Your kids don't want to be bothered. Okay. Okay, I get that, but here's the problem. I walk in, perfect stranger who didn't bring them up. You brought them up and said, hey, that piece is valuable. They won't listen to you, they'll listen to me. I do a walkthrough appraisal or a video chat appraisal or they send a picture of all the stuff in the house and guess what happens? I go, that's worth this and that's worth that and that's worth this. Oh my gosh, I didn't have any idea. Right, because that's not that kid's job. And he doesn't want to deal with all of that stuff. I cannot tell you how many millennials even though you hear that they don't care about antiques, are going to their grandparents, aunts, and such saying, I want that cookie jar, I want that clock, I want that bedroom set. But everybody's saying they don't want it, so you believe the stuff's not worth it. This is a $250 bowl, okay? Here's why. It's made in Limoges, France. It's all hand-painted. It comes into the United States completely blank white. Someone sits down, a little old lady typically, in her, in her living room and starts to hand paint this piece of pottery. You know, paint your own pottery, you're bringing the seven-year-old to the birthday parties and paint your own pottery. Guess what? This goes back to the late 1800s. Limoges, friends, ceramic, very nice, bright and white. Not like this ceramic, which is not bright and white. It's kind of off-white, ochre, eggshell, dark color clay. This is nice bright white Limoges and it says Limoges France right on it. The highest quality of purity level of the clay is made in Limoges. Okay? 22 karat gold banding here all the way around. Interior is glazed and painted because they're gonna put something that you can eat in here. Okay? And then you have to have some of course technique and skill level to make the flowers all the way around. I checked them they are all hand painted. 
It's not transferware like a decal. Value on it about $200, $250. That's beautiful. Now, don't you think that kid would want to know that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> You know, but they're so quick to say it's mom's stuff, it's familiar to me, I want it out of here that it's not worth, that they don't think it's worth it. That's a beautiful piece.